many of you haven't seen this beautiful memorial garden yet. As you can tell, it's not finished, but so much has been done. You can begin to get a sense of how peaceful uh, and how beautiful this really is going to be. We already have dozens of people who have purchased plots here uh, for their final remains. And those of us who've been working on this project really believe that this garden is an extension of our belief as a church that death isn't final and that there is hope in our God after death. That's why people really wanted their remains to be here on the grounds and the property of our church um, as a statement of faith in their hope in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And in his letter to the Corinthians, the Apostle Paul speaks of that same hope and in fact leaves that hope to be part of what is going to build them together, connect them together as the body of Christ. The church in Corinth was troubled by disunity over several things, including spiritual gifts. Paul ends his letter to the Corinthians by reminding them that the true source of unity is faith in the gospel. This is one time when Paul ranks the importance of what he writes. He says that what he is passing on to the Corinthians as the highest priority is this. Jesus died for our sins, according to scripture. He was buried. He was raised on the third day, according to scripture. And he appeared to more than 500 Christians and their leaders. Paul ends his letter with that succinct message because many of the Corinthians are teaching that there is no resurrection from the dead. Paul is insistent that if there is no resurrection from the dead, then not even Jesus was raised from the dead. In that case, the faith of all Christians is futile and they are to be pitied above all other people for living a delusion. However, Paul insists that Jesus was raised from the dead and that gives Jesus power over death and all other things. He finishes his letter by describing to the Corinthians about resurrected bodies and the end of time when Christians are raised and receive victory in Jesus. Because we, Jesus' followers, will be victorious. We have every reason to stand firm and give ourselves fully to the work of the Lord. With that incredible message of hope, Paul encourages the Corinthians to act like the Lord wants them to. Paul knows this encouragement is needed, but he also knows this will not be the last letter he writes to them. <laughs> They're kind of a mess. A few key takeaways from this lesson. First, that hope is the most precious gift we have to give to one another when that hope comes from God. And secondly, that God's hope has been revealed to us primarily in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Now, as Christians, we don't just believe in the resurrection. We are called to live, to act as resurrection people, people who work with God's spirit to redeem and resurrect life all around us. And third, that Christian community and relationships are ruined by hoping on lesser things. And finally, that hope, hope is what 
sustains Christian community and relationships, even in the midst of despair. It's hard to overestimate the importance of hope in building Christian community, in giving us a basis for relating to one another and doing God's work in this world. It binds us together across generations and in every circumstance.